In this example, we're going to show you how to create the vectors that you can see on the screen here. We're going to look at many different tools in the software in order for us to create, edit and distort vectors. We'll also demonstrate how you can import an image that you may have drew yourself and scanned in and then we'll look at how we can bring that into the software and automatically create vectors to fit around it. So let's go and close this down and then we're going to go and create a new file. So working with a single sided job we're going to set our width of this to be 19 inches the height is going to be 9 inches material thickness is going to be 3 quarters of an inch we're going to set the Z0 position on the material surface XY datum position is going to be in the center of the job and we could go ahead and press OK now as we're working with a drawing exercise I just want to take a moment to review my snap options we go to edit snap options or press F4 on the keyboard you can see I'm presented with a snapping options dialog box so here we've got the default settings of all the various snap options that we have available and for this example I'm going to make sure that geometry snapping and smart snapping is switched on my snap radius I'm going to keep that at the default of 10 pixels and we could go ahead and press OK so we're going to start by drawing in a few simple shapes Throughout this video we'll be looking at how we can draw shapes within the form and how we can use shortcut keys to create various shapes. So let's start by drawing a circle. Okay, So for this I want to make the centre point x0, y0. So the centre is going to be in the middle of my job as we can see there. Diameter, I'm going to give that a diameter of 8 inches and I could go ahead and press create and it will create that circle for me based on the centre point that we've got here and the diameter that I've entered in here. So we can close that down. Now I'd like to go ahead and create a rectangle. Let's draw a rectangle here. Here I could input some values, specify the anchor point where the anchor point lies in X and Y, press create, or I could simply just draw up the shape. For instance, if I wanted to draw up a rectangle where the centre of the rectangle is going to be at x0, y0, I simply press the Alt key on the keyboard and then with my left mouse button, click and then I can drag that shape out. And we can see that I have the values displayed uh, where my cursor is. So I can currently see that we have a width of 18, height of 2. I just want to bring that so we've got width of 18, height of 4, click and you'll see we've got our rectangle in place. So let's go ahead and close that down. So now I'd like to look at changing the shape of this rectangle. To do that I need to go into node edit mode. And so in node edit mode I'm able to see all of the constituent points that we have in this vector. So you can see the four nodes that make up this rectangle and you'll see that we have what we call spans between each of these nodes. You'll also notice on these spans that we have these virtual midpoints. You can see them on the midpoint of each one of those spans. Now what I'd like to do is take advantage of this midpoint and this midpoint here and turn them into actual points. So to do that, I'm just going to hover over it. You'll see my cursor's changed. It's telling me that I'm over that midpoint there. I'm going to right click, use the option to insert a point. Do the same at the bottom, right click, insert a point. Now what I'd like to do is move these points to change the shape of this rectangle. So to do that, I'm just going to go over this point here, I'm going to right click, and we're going to look at the properties of that node there. So you can see its absolute position at the moment is X, 0, Y, 2. I'd like to drop this down the Y axis by half an inch. So to do that, I'm just going to use an absolute move here my x0, I don't want to move our node in x, I only want to move it in y, so if we're going to drop it down by half an inch, that y value is now going to be 1.5, if we go ahead, press apply, and you'll see it's moved that down, and the position of that node is now x0, y, 1.5. So let's go ahead and select that shape, and I'd like to move this node up the y axis by half an inch. So another way that we can move nodes to absolute positions in the software is by looking at how we could use the transform shortcut keys to do that. So 
So if I just click on this node here, you'll see that at the bottom there we're displayed with an absolute position of x0, y negative 2. Now I'd like to move this node to an absolute position of x0, y negative 1.5. So I'm going to select this node. So I've got my left mouse button pressed down and you'll see highlighted at the bottom I'm going to type in 0x negative 1.5y and you'll see now it's moved that node to the absolute position that we typed in there so 0 in x negative 1.5 for y and so holding the left mouse key down whilst typing in these absolute values is just another way that we can move nodes in the software so let's put this back into normal selection mode and now we're going to look at creating some offsets where we'll edit these to form our construction vectors which will help us with the rest of the design process. So let's take this vector, I'm going to go and offset that, offset that inwards by 0 0.8 inches, create sharp offset corners switched on, select new switch on, offset and you'll see we've got our newly created vector that's offset inwards by 0.8 of an inch. Let's just close that form down and now what I'd like to do is look at drawing a line that goes from this point here to this point here and this point here to this point here and the reason for that is I'd like to use that line in order for us to trim away the centre section of this vector here but we want to trim it so it goes a little bit slightly past the circle that we have here so to do that let's go into the polyline tool and snap to that point there and then snap to that point there, press spacebar to start a new line and snap to that point there, snap in position there, spacebar to come out we can close that down and we could look at using the interactive trim tool and we're going to look at getting rid of this one here and then we'll get rid of that line there and we could close that down so now I could look at deleting those lines, so I could select it, press delete on the keyboard, select it press delete on the keyboard. Now we're going to select this circle here we're going to offset that one inwards and this time we're going to go in at a distance of 1.1 1 .1. then we'll go ahead and press offset so you can see we've got that newly created circle there. I'm going to close that down and again I'd like to look at just trimming away some of the vectors that we have there. So use the interactive vector trim tool we're going to look at getting rid of this one here and this one here. Then you can close that form down. So now we're at a stage where we have two different types of vectors in our job. We have design vectors and we have construction vectors which we'll look at using later on in the design. So it'd be a very good idea at this stage to organize my vectors into layers. So I'm going to take this vector here hold down shift, I'm going to select this one, this one and this one here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the right mouse option with those vectors selected and we're going to use the option here to move to layer move to a new layer and we're going to give this a name we're going to call this one construction and I'm going to make that layer invisible and inactive we can go ahead press OK. So you can see that they've now been moved, go to my layers tab we have a new layer here, construction. So layer 1, I want to actually change the name of that so I'm going to select that again to highlight that text and we're going to call this layer outline shape. So to create this outline we're going to look at welding these two vectors together. So I'm going to take this circle here, shift and select this shape here and then we're going to look at using the weld option. What that will do, it will just keep the outermost vectors and everything that's inside is going to remove them. Okay, so you can see we've got this new shape here thanks to the weld tool. Now with that vector selected, I just want to create a couple of offsets. So let's go back into the offset tool. We're going to offset this vector inwards and we're going to offset that inwards by 0.2 make sure create sharp offset corners is switched on select new is also switched on offset you'll see it's created that offset for me now because we had select new checked it's now selected 
the new vector that we created here and with that selected we're going to offset that one inwards and we're going to offset that inwards by 0 0.1 this time go ahead press apply and you'll see it's created that new vector there we can close that down and there we have our completed outline shape so let's go up to our layers bar here I'm going to turn the visibility of outline shape off don't need to see those vectors for the time being and then we're going to switch on the construction layer you'll see that the outline shape is now highlighted in a red text and the reason for that is it's the software's way of telling me that the outline shape is still the active layer even though we've switched the visibility off it's still active as it's bold so anything that I create now will still be added to this layer so to change that I can simply select layer that I have visible so the construction layer we can see it's now bold it is now the active layer so anything I create now will be added to this layer now what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at adding in a new layer so we're going to give this a name of text then if I just click in the white space we can see that is now the active layer it's bold and we could go ahead and create some vectors to go on this text layer I still like to keep the construction layer visible as we're going to look at using these construction vectors to aid our design. So let's just click in the white space there. So now I'd like to look at drawing a star. To draw a star we come over to the draw star icon over here and then we can simply specify the number of points using these arrow keys or I could simply just type in a value. I want to draw a five pointed star, so I've got five points in there and then I can simply just pull a shape out you'll see that we've got a five pointed star what I'd like to do is alter the outer radius of the star so I'm going to change that, make that half an inch in there and then what I'd also like to do is I'd like to look at the points of the star here and here and I'd like to have horizontal straights along the top so to do that I'm going to type in a precise inner radius percentage here and then that percentage is going to be 38.2 go ahead press apply and you can see that I've got my star there with the horizontal straights at the top so let's just close that form down and we we'll use the option here to zoom to fit and so with that newly created star what I'd like to do is create copies of it that follow the curve of this vector here so to do that we're going to use this option over here to copy along vectors so let's go into that form and what this requires us to do is select a vector that we'd like to copy so that's the star and then the next option in the selection is we need to select the vector that we'd like to copy that vector along in this case we'd like to create copies of the star that follow the shape of this curve here so I'm going to hold down shift and we're going to select this vector here and that will open up this option here where we can specify the distance between copies or we could just simply input a number of copies in this case I'm just going to go with the number so I'd like five stars to follow the curve of that vector I'm going to align objects to the curve and we could just go ahead and press copy and so you can see that we've created the copies based on the shape of the vector and where the start point is. Now talking about the start point, I know that the start point on this vector is over here and that's why all of the top points of the star are actually pointing downwards. So to change that so that they're on the other side, so on the outer side of that vector, we're just going to use the option here to reverse direction press copy you'll see now that the top points are all pointing outwards which is what I wanted so let's go ahead and just close that form down so now let's just click in the white space and I'm just going to take that star I'm going to delete it I don't need it anymore so the next part of the design that we're going to look at is some text so to draw text we simply come over to the draw text icon up here and here we just simply enter the text that we'd like to create in this case I'm going to type in 5 and return to go down and we're going to type in star and return and coffee I'd like to do this as a true type font and the font that I'd like to use it is actually Times New Roman 
If that wasn't there, you could just simply use the drop down bar and search for your font. And a useful tip here is if you type in the letter of the font that you'd like to use, in this example Times New Roman, you can go to T and that'll just bring up all of the T's and then we could just simply find the font that we want. So we're going to use Times New Roman in this case. I'm going to make that bold. I'm going to make the text alignment in the centre. I'm going to go to the text height of 0.8 and then I could just simply press apply and that's added that text in there. Let's just close that form down. Now what I'd like to do is separate this text block into three separate words. If I right click on that text you'll see I'm given the option to break text block into lines. If we select that that will now separate the text into three separate entities. With the 5 selected I'm going to select it again to put it into transform mode. I'm going to take it by the centre here, I'm going to drag it over and I'd like to snap it to the centre of this shape that we're in now. You can see that I'm snapping to the centre point there as my cursor's changed, it's telling me we've snapped to the centre point of this shape here. Let's see that again, but this time we'll do it for the star and this shape here. So I'm going to take star, select it again to put it into transform mode, take it by the centre, move it over and you'll see that I'm able to snap to the centre of this shape here. Next what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the coffee text but I'd like to wrap it along this curve here. So to do that we're going to look at using this option here, wrap text on a curve. Okay. So with that selected I'm going to hold down shift to select the curve and I'm going to go over to wrap text along curve. And so here we're presented with various options in order for us to control how we wrap that text along the curve. So text size, we're going to maintain the text size, text spacing will come to shortly. Text position, we'd like that to go directly on the curve. Text on the other side, let's just uncheck that. We're going to align that to the middle and we're going to align it to curve. We could go ahead and press apply. So we can see here that the, the coffee word is backwards and upside down. That's all down to the start point of the vector that we're using to wrap the text along. So the start point must be over here. So to reverse that, we're just going to use this option here, text on other side. Now if we take a look at the coffee text, we can see that the F and the F are overlapping each other, as is the F and the E here. So what we could do is look at altering the text spacing, whereby we could just use the uh, slider bar here. You'll notice that as I'm using it, we're actually editing the space equally between each of these characters. And we're still not really getting much space between the two Fs and the F and the E. So alternatively, what we could look at is using a different tool to edit the spacing between various letters. So let's just close that down and we're going to go into this option here, edit text space and then curve. So here we simply just select the text and this tool will enable me to individually go in and edit uh, the space and either increase it or decrease the space between the two characters. For example, to bring text closer together, you'll see that I have two arrows pointing at each other between the C and the O. I can click to bring them closer together. Or if I wanted to take something further apart, for example the F and the F here, I could hold down shift and you'll see the arrows are pointing away from each other. So I can click to create that space in there. I could do the same over here between the F and the E, hold down shift, click to increase that space in. If I wanted to I might bring the O and the F closer together and you could just do this until you're happy with the overall space in between each of those characters. I'm just going to make that a little bigger there. I might make the E and the E a little bigger there also. Okay, so I'm content with that, so let's just put that back into normal selection mode. Next thing I'd like to do is look at distorting the 5 and the star text to the shape that we have surrounding it. In order for me to do that, we're going to look at using the distort tool. All I need here is two curves or lines that we want to distort the text to. So in this case I don't need this span here and I don't need this span here. 
So let's have a look at deleting those spans. So I'm going to select that vector, go into node edit mode, right click on that span, use the option here to delete. I'm going to select this vector here, right click on that span, use the option to delete that span also. Next thing I'd like to do is I'd just like to check that my start points are travelling in the same direction as its opposing vector. So here we're going from left to right, here we're also going left to right, so I'm happy with that. Let's check this one over here, so this time we're going right to left, and this one here is also going right to left, so that's OK. So let's just put that back in normal selection mode. And so now we're going to select the five texts and go into Distort Selected Objects. At the moment it defaults to Bounding Box. In this case what we'd like to do is distort the five texts between two curves, between this vector here and this vector here. So I'm going to hold down Shift, I'm going to select this vector here, Shift and select this vector here, so bottom first, then the top one. Then I'm going to use the option between two curves got a check there saying that that's valid, it's going to work, press apply, you'll see it's distorted that. Now it's not quite what I'm looking for, you can see that's actually in reverse, so I'm just going to press Control Z just to undo that, and if we just take a look at the vectors here, we can see the start point is on the right hand side, and so it's distorting it from the right to the left, that's why it was in reverse. So in this case we just need to sort of reverse the direction, so I'm just going to go to this node here, right click, make start point, this one here, right click, and then we'll go and make that the start point. Then we could just right click to come out of that, right click again to put it into selection mode, and take the word 5, hold down shift, select that vector, shift, select this vector, again we've got that valid check there, let's press apply and you can see that's more what I'm looking for. And So if we take a closer look at that distorted text we can see that the top of all of these letters are in line with the vector that we've got here. On the bottom you'll see that only the V is in line with the bottom vector that we lined it up to. And The reason for that is simply that the V is actually uh, a larger letter in comparison to the F, I and the E. So what we could do is we could just look at uh, transforming this, so let's put it into transform object mode, Okay, so that puts it into uh, transform mode here, in which case you'll see we've got all of the handles and I can simply just drag that down just to roughly line that up with the line that we've got here. Okay, So I like that, so let's just use the option here, zoom to fit, so now let's go ahead and select the star text and distort it to these two lines here. So again with that selected, I'm going to hold down shift, select the bottom line first. It's always important to press the bottom line first in the selection, otherwise if you did it the other way around your text would be inverted or it would be upside down. So bottom first, then the top, so hold down shift and select that one there. And we'll go ahead and press apply and you'll see it's distorted that for me there. Again, let's just zoom in. Okay, got the same issue here. Uh, so the top of the S and the A are touching that line there, and the bottom of the S is touching the bottom line. So again, let's just use the transform objects here, and we're just going to pull on that handle there just to line it up with the line, so that the majority of the text is lined up to that line. I'm going to do the same for the bottom. So just going to pull that handle down. You'll see now that the T, A and R are all in line with that vector there at the bottom. So let's just use the option here to zoom to fit. So now that we've distorted the text and then we've transformed the text so it fits in line with the two lines, we're now ready to make that permanent change whereby we're going to look at baking that distortion. So to do that with this selected, use the option here, bake distortion. And what will happen is we'll now have individual letters that we can select there. Let's do the same for this one over here. So this is still in distortion mode and what we need to do is we just need to go ahead and bake in that distortion, close that down. Again, you can see we can individually access each of those letters. 
So let's go over to our layers and to turn off the construction layer, don't need to see those vectors anymore. Let's switch on the outline shape so we can take a look at the sign as a whole. So it doesn't look too bad. The final part of the design here is we're going to look at importing some artwork that I've created. We're going to bring it into the centre of our job and we're going to look at tracing that artwork to create vectors from it. So to do that, let's just add in a new layer. We're going to call this layer Centre Graphic. Okay, I'm going to make that the active layer there. I'm just going to switch off text, switch off the outline shape and let's just click into the white space. So to bring in an image, we simply go up to File Operations, Import Bitmap for Tracing. And from the Project folder, I'm going to bring in coffeemug.jpg, open that, and you'll see that's brought that image into my session. And so with that imported, if we go to our Layers bar up here, you'll notice that we now have a bitmap layer. So every time we import a bitmap, it brings it in on its own individual layer, which I can easily switch on or off. Okay, so we're going to still make sure that we've got the centre graphic layer, the active layer, as this is the layer that I'd like our vectors to go onto. Let's just click in the white space there. So we're going to take that image, and as I said, we'd like to look at creating vectors that represent this image. So to do that, we're going to look at using the trace bitmap option. So with that bitmap selected, we're going to go over to Create Vectors and use the option Trace Bitmap. Now the first thing that we need to do in this form is specify what type of tracing to use, colour or black and white. As I'm working with a monotone image, we're going to choose the black and white option. Next step in the form is we need to choose the number of colours that we're going to draw a vector around. Here I can use the slider bar and I can increase the threshold here and you'll see that we're picking up more colours there and we're obviously creating more noise the more that I go up. Alternatively we could go the, in the opposite direction and reduce those the number of colours that we're seeing there and you'll see that we're actually losing that image there. So the default seemed okay so at 0.5 seems to have picked everything up that I'd like to trace a vector around. Next step in the form is to specify the corner fit. So this is where we choose how loose or tight the vector will be around the corners of the colours. Now we only really have corners at the ends of my lines that I've drawn. So we're just going to go with quite a loose setting here. If we preview that we can start to see the vectors that are being created here. Next we want to look at the noise filter. So the noise filter is basically how sensitive we want to be at picking up each individual pixel that we've got in our image. So if we zoom in on our image you'll see that it's picked up vectors for areas that actually don't have any colour within my drawing. And so to remove those, I'm just simply going to up the noise filter to 10 pixels and if we preview that, you'll see it's removed those. Let's use this option here to zoom to fit. And then the last option that we have in the form is bitmap fading. Now this actually doesn't have any effect on your vectors that we've got here. It's more of a means of how much contrast we want in our image there. So when you're happy with the vectors that you've created from the trace bitmap tool, you can go ahead and press apply and then we can close that form down. So now that we've created those vectors, it's best practice that you go and check over the quality of those vectors when you use the trace bitmap tool, as this isn't really the best solution for creating smooth vectors around an image. So let's just go to our layers, we're going to switch off the bitmap layer Make sure Centre Graphic is still the active layer. I'm going to select the vector there and use this option to zoom Active View to selected objects. And then we're going to come over to the vector, right click and use the option to ungroup objects. Okay, so just going to ungroup objects to layer. The reason that they were grouped is because we had the group option checked when we were in the trace bitmap form. So now we've got access to the individual vectors here. 
Now if we go into node edit mode and if we just select one of those vectors there, and so you'll see that we have lots and lots of nodes uh, within this vector here. And this is going to make it quite hard to edit this vector just to smooth out uh, quite a lot of these points. Now we do have a tool that we could use as an alternative. So let's just put that in selection mode. And I'm just going to box select all of these vectors here. Then we're going to come over and we're going to use this option to create a curve fit. So we're going to fit curves to selected vectors. So let's click in there. And so within this form we can actually see all of the nodes or all of the points that we've got in all of our vectors there. So what we need to do is we need to choose the fitting type. Now in this case we want to work with Bezier curves. Once we've selected the fitting type we then move on select a tolerance. In this case I'm going to go with what we've got here 0 0.03. Keep sharp corners, we're going to keep that switched off, we don't want sharp corners in this case. We want to replace the selected vectors and if we go ahead and press preview you'll see now We've removed a lot of those nodes there. We've got some nice Bezier spans between each of those nodes. And now we can see it's going to be a lot easier for me to go in and make any final edits to these vectors. So let's go ahead and press OK. And then we'll go into node edit mode. I'm going to select this vector here. And if we just zoom out and then zoom back in, I'm just going to make some final tweaks to the shape. For instance, this node here isn't very smooth so what I'm going to look at doing is I'm just going to look at removing that node so I'm going to right click delete that point and I could look at using this handle just to bring that out a little okay so the rest of that vector looks okay come over to this one here again this one doesn't look too bad as is this one okay, this one here again I could look at just deleting this point so I'll right click delete point you'll see we've got a nice smooth flow going through there now and I can just visually see that that one looks okay also. So let's use the option here to zoom to fit and then I'm going to go into normal selection mode. I'm just going to box select all of these vectors and then we're going to look at grouping them. So let's come over to this icon over here and we're going to group those vectors so with these grouped we can now look at switching on the other layers in which we can then size or move to fit within our sign. Let's go to the layers, I'm going to switch on the outline shape, switch on the text. Okay, So I'm just going to select our center graphic here, I'm going to get one of the handles, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to pull on the handle and that's just going to resize it towards its center. Okay, So you can see that there might be a little bit too much, I might just make that a little bit bigger. Then I'm just going to use the arrow down key just to nudge that down, maybe over to the right a little. And I'm just really trying to get it in the centre of our job. I'm just going to bring it down one more time. I could look at rotating this also. Until you're happy with the way that the graphic fits within the rest of your sign. Okay, so I'm just going to take that, if I just zoom in, just nudge that over to the right. Maybe just bring that up a little. So I'm just going to hold down Alt just to keep that in line there. I think that looks okay where that is. Let's just click in the white space there. And so that completes this vector drawing session on the five star coffee sign. You'll find in the related videos that we have a follow-up tutorial that discusses how we can create some 2.5D toolpaths in order for us to cut the sign out. So let's go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder we're going to save this file as 5 Star Coffee Vector Drawing, press Save, and then you can access that from the Project folder.